It's not easy living on a dying planet, but it is easy to feel overwhelmed when it comes to making changes and taking action to try and save it. Where do you start? Is it even worth it? Can you really make a difference? Welcome to the Tea on Sustainable Living podcast, where we attempt to answer these questions by spilling the tea on living sustainably in a world that's going to shit. I'm Brandy. And I'm Hannah. And for years, we've been navigating the big, messy, gray area of caring about our planet. It hasn't always been smooth sailing, but we're not giving up yet. So brew yourself a cup of tea, get comfy, and let's try and navigate that gray area together. Hello, Give a Shitter. This is Brandy. And this is Hannah. And you are listening to episode number 17 whoop, 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 whoop. of the Tea on Sustainable Living podcast. <laughs> and cheers. We uh, both have some Friday afternoon beverages. Yep. There's alcohol I'll, I'll in them. <laughs> <laughs> there is some alcohol involved because it's Friday. Fry, fry, yay. Fry, yay. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, now that Rebecca Black <laughs> song has just popped into my head. <laughs> so, sorry listener Friday. sorry listener it's now stuck in your head uh for now yeah for- and you can age us from that comment if you hadn't already got us pegged oh yeah <laughs> they probably have yeah I, I think so too um what are we talking about today brandy this is another one of our brandy's episodes because i have been slacking a little bit in planning that episodes so that's okay I was, yeah, I was numbers 18 and 19 are on me <laughs> they're on your, yeah I think there we have a list of ideas I think there's some good ones that you have yeah. suggested that would that would be good for the next ones yeah um but we can talk about that <laughs> later because we are recording um I feel like well I feel like this has been like a mini series on like me just trying to ease my guilt on things <laughs> like our last episode was about spending unnecessarily um and this one well, at the time of recording is end of October. Maybe mm-hmm. might have been more appropriate late summer, early summer, middle summer, just summer in general because it's about sleep and yeah, like how it's all related mm-hmm. to climate change and how it's hotter at night, so you turn on the fan. Yeah. Or in my case, air conditioner, which this summer was a lot more. Yeah, I'm quite excited about this episode. I feel like it's something I hadn't really thought about because um, obviously I'm coming from the UK. And no one has air conditioning in the UK. And most people until recently, which kind of links to this podcast, would even have a, like a fan. Mm-hmm. So it was only when I moved to, well, actually when I moved to Australia, I guess would be the first time I lived somewhere that was hot enough that you would have like air conditioning as a normal, normal item to have in your house. And how many people so, do you know back home that now have a fan or even an air conditioner? It's like the summer it was, it was quite yeah. hot than normal, right? In the UK? I mean, I still don't know anyone with air conditioning. I mean, I'm sure there are people that, that do, but I think more people have fans. I like a lot more have like ended up picking up a fan just because, you know, obviously you can't base climate change on individual days, but, you know, the summers recently have been hotter. And it's always that thing in the news. It's like, oh, and it's going to be blazing hot this weekend. And there's like a run on the fans. And like, you know, it's not an item that people would have had before. Whereas I would say, I wouldn't be surprised if most people had at least a fan. Mm -hmm. But I'm basing that on speculation and the fact that my family now owns a fan, which we didn't even think about when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of fans, my... I have the outline up on my other computer and the fan just turned on. So I'm going to close that because <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I'll be able to edit that out. Right. Yeah. And so you were, you were wanting to talk about sleep, right? And how that impacts us. Yeah. So, well, now I've just shut my other computer. There was an article, I think it was National Geographic that basically right. like, yeah, I read it's like, hey, well. yeah, it's hotter and you can't sleep as well when it's hotter at night. I don't think that's like big news to anyone, but there there is like science to it. Um, I have to say that was like quite an eye opening um, article for me. I think really, yeah, I found it quite interesting. I think because so the premise of this article, as Brandon's kind of hinted at, is that well, not really, but like the the as we can't sleep as well, 
and that's kind of like we can't sleep as well and the and the humans don't really adapt to warmer temperatures and then the kind of premise is that when we have less sleep we make decisions that you know we everyone's had like a sleepless night it's really hard the next day you you order your takeout you don't go to the gym you like leave the pile of dishes in the sink you know just everyday things but then that has more of an impact right that you can also like um extend that argument out to like okay you're then make less sustainable decisions Mm -hmm. yeah it's a vicious cycle because so climate change warmer nights affects your sleep you don't sleep as well yeah obviously um because our bodies are like um designed i think there is an ideal temperature of well i don't know in celsius uh fahrenheit like 60 something i've seen a range from like like low to upper 60s um somewhere around there yeah i know it said in the article that people slept better under 10 degrees Oh, is that okay? 20. Which outside, presumably not inside, because 10 degrees is quite Yeah, low. so... That's like 45, 50? So it'd be about 50 Fahrenheit, 10 Celsius. Yeah. So, so I guess that makes it like, like... 15, 20? 15, yeah. Yeah, somewhere, yeah, around there. Um, <laughs> anyway, Google Celsius and Fahrenheit conversions. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it affects your sleep. And then... It's like, it's the vicious cycle in that, yeah, then you can, you don't have the energy, the mm. mental capacity to to make the same sustainable choices because they often involve a bit more effort. You're going to go for the convenient route. Like, we are humans. We're designed right. to want the easier route when it's in front of us. Take out or yeah. rent a, you know, drive, get a cab versus walking or mm-hmm. taking a bus, etc. Um, but then bring it back to sleep. Then at night you have a fan on all night or an air conditioner. And then that mm. contributes more to the problem, whether it's using energy from it just being on. And then in the case of an air conditioner, it literally, like, puts hot air in, like, your immediate yeah. surroundings. So. Yeah. I f- it's, it, was, it was, yeah, I found that um, article eye-opening, I think, because my initial reaction mm. is more on the side of, like, you should just kind of lump it. Right? Yeah. It's like, okay, well... Obviously, within reason, you know, living in Madrid, I definitely have like a fan on at night in the summer. Like it's just too hot. You you can't sleep without or it's very difficult to sleep without something cooling you down. Although I, I did do one summer without a fan, but having got one, I regret it. But I think there's like a part of me as in I would like I can really tell the difference is what I want to say between that a summer I spent without a fan. And I'm like, why did I do that? That was crazy. Um, because it's so much more pleasant and you sleep so much better even with a fan. Um, but I think there's that part of me that's like a little bit more like, oh, you know, come on, like, it's okay. Like, just stick with a fan or like, you know, do we really need air con? But I don't know. It's like Catholic guilt or something where I'm like, no, we should just like get through it but reading the article and kind of they really laid out the impact, the negative impact of not sleeping. Are you just talking about the, the Atmos earth one or the national geographic? The national geographic, I think. Cause there was another really good one that first kind of spurred all this as atmos.earth. Um, mm-hmm. the name of the article sleep more, save the planet. Yeah. Which I forgot that was the article name. Cause I had temporarily put that as the title of this episode, but I don't think I'll steal the article name. <laughs> I don't know what we'll title this. Um, you know, you're listening to it now. So, <laughs> but there, I'm going to read this section of the article. Um, when we sleep, so do most of the resources we depend on, effectively preserving them. Our cars aren't running, our computers are shut down, are shut down, and most, if not all, of the lights are off. We're also not eating, showering, or making coffee. This gives the planet time to recharge too. In fact, if over if the over 300 million people living in just the U.S. alone got just one more hour of sleep at night, we could, in theory, save up to 2.4 billion pounds of carbon dioxide emissions every day. Plus, when we wake up after a full night of restful slumber, a more active and present mind can engage in longer-lasting, sustainable choices. Yeah, that's like we were saying. Without this rest, both the planet and people mm-hmm. suffer. So I like the part of this that points out everything else that's like sleeping or not running while we are yeah also resting yeah it's true so what do we do how do we um i don't know piece this guilt 
my guilt. <laughs> <laughs> because for the, like, the fan has never been an issue for me. Because, I mean, ever since freshman year in college, like, sharing a room, and living in a dorm, I've had mm. one on just for noise, like, white noise, um, every night. And when I'm, like, in a hotel or somewhere, staying at a friend's or family's without it, I, like, have to quick, like, download a white noise app. Like, it's, I'm just so used to it now. Um, so just to clarify, both for myself and for the listeners, when we use a fan, all we're using is more electricity, right? That's the unsustainable part, plus the resources that have gone into creating a fan. Yeah. Whereas when we're using air con, the chemicals that, that are used to cool uh, down the air. Yeah, that's another aspect of it. Uh, is, is the negative part and that it also produces co2 right yeah and then but i more, got, i don't energy, i'm not sure why more energy intensive okay than, and then more energy intensive yeah because it's working to right. cool the air and then blowing it out whereas the fan just blowing out the air that's already that's already air. there yeah yeah i'm not sure yeah. and outs of like how the air conditioners work um, yeah because i did read and this is kind of like those like tech solutions i guess about um a company that is trying to develop a way that they could actually filter out the CO2 from the air outside. Mm. So they, they could do some sort of carbon capture mm-hmm. while creating this, the, the, while using the air conditioning because mm-hmm. they're like sucking the air from outside, you know, in like office buildings, like with big air conditioning units. Mm-hmm. Um, so potentially they could be used for like a dual purpose. Yeah, and I know there are alternative air conditioners, uh, which I looked into getting before I got mine, that work off, like, evaporation. Because, like, when you, Mm -hmm. like, the one summer, the first summer that I really tried not to buy an air conditioner, I put it off to, like, mid-July, I think, here. I would go to bed with a spray bottle by my bed, and you spray the water (laughs) on you, and then as the water evaporates off your skin, it it has a cooling effect. I forget the why of it, but it works. But you can't continuously spray yourself while you're sleeping. (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's, and it is true. Like, I don't know how many people listening to this live in like hot climates mm-hmm. or have experienced that, but it is really difficult. Like, I'm just thinking the same, you know, I I mean, I've never had aircon. This is the first place I've lived with aircon and it just has it in the living room. But at night, you know, okay, we've got the fan and now I'm going to put like, I read about like wetting a scarf and I'm going to put the wet scarf on top of me or I'm going to put it in front of the fan so that the air is cooler. And you like, you come up with all of these ways to try and like cool down because it's really, you know, difficult. Yeah. Yeah. That was me until I (laughs) just caved and bought an air conditioner, which up until this last summer, I was good about using it only sparingly. I would like maybe blast Mm -hmm. it for a little bit, um, mostly like right before bed and then be able to turn it off and just be okay with the fan. And then I was like a setting, like an automatic shut off in like two, three, four hours whenever I can see that the temperature is going to be low enough that, that I don't think it'll be an issue for me. But what happened this summer? The summer was just too hot, too many warm nights. And my bill, I think it was still under my lowest winter bill. Because my apartment is horribly insulated um, and it does get quite cold. So my radiator is on a bit more. And yeah, mm-hmm. everything's electric in my my apartment. Um, yeah. So yeah, I used it. I had it on throughout the night a lot more with the, the auto shut off feature. So not like there may be a couple nights where I was like, no, I just want a good night's sleep. I don't want to be disturbed when it shuts off. So there mm-hmm. were still a couple nights where I just kept it on first whenever I wake up. Yeah. Um, whenever I woke up, I turned it off. Um. So maybe that's why I've been feeling... I don't know, I felt especially guilty this summer. Because I think last summer I'd made my peace with it. Like, okay, this is my air conditioner. It's summer. It's hot. I'm going to use it so I can sleep. Yeah. And, and yeah. Right, because that is an interesting one. Because it when you're really hot, okay, with the air conditioning, because it's, it's – this is one thing if we're just using it in the context of sleep. Mm-hmm. But then it is, feels like a slippery slope. Because it is so nice to be cool. It is. When it is really hot outside. And we're we're talking like, you know, over 30 degrees. Even over 40 this summer. Even, yeah. And some, I mean, I wasn't here, but yeah, like really hot temperatures. Like, and for like high 30s for like a month. 
And then you just, you know, like that was the thing, having the air con in the living room. That's the first time I've had it. I was like, oh, I just want to be a bit cold. Yeah. When I had COVID, and I was a bit cold for the better part yeah. of the week because, yeah, I, when you're sick, you just want to be bundled up. Right. So it's like finding maybe the balance is finding what are those rules for you. Yeah. And I think and trying to stick to them. Yes, and then constantly reevaluating because, like anything, you have to kind of adjust over time. But there, there are a couple more things I wanted to touch on. There, people always say, "Okay, well, you've been living here how long, and you're still not used to it? You haven't adapted?" And I forget which of the articles, but we'll link all of them in the show notes. Um, was saying how it's not as easy as you might think. I think if you've maybe grown up somewhere, um, and the temperature has been relatively the same, um, if it hasn't been, you know, steadily increasing over the years because of what we're doing to the planet. Um, there are people I know who just aren't that bothered by heat and night, but they didn't grow up with an air conditioner. So yeah. I think that's a big difference too, but I, I don't think it's as easy to just adapt if you move to a new country mm-hmm. or somewhere warmer. Yeah. I don't know. I, f- I feel like that reading that in that article also like helped with the guilt a bit. Like I'm, and I mean, America and especially Texas where, where I'm originally from, air conditioning blasting everywhere you have to bring like an extra layer with you everywhere you go because you'll be freezing as soon as you walk inside Mm -hmm. like anywhere um so that's that's a big thing to like overcome so yeah i read an in an article as well which i thought was an interesting kind of midway solution but kind of on that point of when the air con is so cold and it was i think it was in india that they changed the I don't know if it was like a legal change or it was something a company decided to do but to change the automatic like the default setting of the air con Mm. from I think you know from like 20 degrees to 24 degrees Mm. oh yeah the summer in Spain they changed right for public uh, as well they did it was like um shopping centers and I think it was a general like blanket any kind of public spaces there was a limit, and I forget the exact number, but it still felt a bit high. Um, and then I think they came back right. and said, okay, not for – that. Li- this limit won't apply to, like, hotels or gyms. I yeah. think specific, so I'll try and find mm. a news article. Um, but, yeah, just, like, how much do we need – is it okay to be a bit uncomfortable? Like, where do you find – where do you put the limit? And is it okay to put that limit on other people? Yeah. And I would maybe argue that yes, it is. Yeah, but in public like, spaces and someone's home, then I guess they can do what they want. But yeah, I think you have to be you careful know. with public spaces, like to not overdo it. And I don't know what the right number is. Right. Um, but I think there was one shopping center I went to this summer, and I felt like I was hotter inside than out. Because mm. whatever they had their settings and all the people that were inside, and I looked. I think. I, like a lot of people, will look to go to, like, a movie theater, shopping center, where, excuse me, where they know it's going to be cooler, to cool off. Yeah, that's like your, that's true. your outing for the day. So then you remove that, and then, like, it got dangerously hot this summer. So if you're elderly or have health conditions, right. you're, like, you know, an at-risk population when it gets really, really hot, um, it's just really unsafe. So they're not having right. to go to cool yeah. off. Yeah. And that is another question as well, isn't it? You know... Um, with this thing of the rising temperatures, obviously we can say, oh, but, you know, in the past, like our ancestors didn't have like air conditioning, you know, or fans, Um, but the temperatures are hotter. And also maybe we need to re-emphasize like traditional building technologies. And we've kind of gone the other way. It's like, okay, we don't, you know, we're not adapting to earth. We're like, adapting the earth to us yes and actually we need to kind of go back the other way and say all right like the traditional like all the white houses that you find in in Greece and in the south of Spain like painting the buildings white um have you heard about the earth ships no what are the earth ships it's where they like make it's like you're like you're saying they're they build, build their houses out of like clay and they design it with the sun in mind for like optimal mm-hmm. heating and cooling in peak like winter and summer. It's really right. Cool. I'll send you some videos um, and we'll link I'll link one or two. Um, yeah, they're really cool. and um, yeah, exactly stuff like that that we kind of need to 
perhaps look at again. And also you, we start need to start applying those perhaps to countries like the UK where we haven't needed to do that before. Are there lessons we can take in the UK, for example, from the Mediterranean that mm-hmm. are used to hotter climates and other ways that we can, you know, adapt buildings um but yeah at the same time kind of recognizing maybe temperatures are more extreme now Mm -hmm. um and like you said like in Spain I mean I don't think most well I don't know I'd be interested to know but I don't think most buildings have air conditioning Mm -hmm. like homes Mm -hmm. you know the most that I've seen in Spain the in the hotter areas um which wouldn't be considered madrid but would be the people with the ceiling fans mm. right and those are fans they're not air conditioning yeah, yeah heating's much more common here yeah and yeah because yeah it gets cold um, too um we have a 10 minute warning so we'll try and wrap this up within the next well 10 minutes um <laughs> something i thought of while you were talking i don't remember the source but as far as like the the group's um, like the top contributors to like greenhouse gases, it's like food is a big one, the type of food you consume, transportation, and I think buildings and infrastructure mm. is like a huge one. Um, yeah, building constructions and yeah, the just the resources like a large like office building, for example, will yeah will consume the emissions it creates from that. Yeah, if you're air conditioning like a whole a whole building, right? Yeah, that's and lot. also the kind of um, trying to be more aware in those spaces like office buildings and I mean in your homes as well but like um you know when and this is hard especially if the system is through the whole building but there might be offices that are closed for parts of the summer but they're still getting air conditioned or they're still Mm -hmm. getting heated in the winter other ways other things that we can do to change that or to change systems so that it's easier to like isolate different elements like you know we've been talking about the summer but also in winter with the heating you don't necessarily need to heat your whole house Mm, you might just need to heat certain rooms and then turn the off in rooms that you don't use as often yeah and in Um, the u.s it's common for homes i don't know how much um, apartment buildings but there are like vents that you have like a little mm. like what's the word not a toggle uh whatever event that you can close or open um so that's an option too but i don't know i also think it might be i think my my approach to this for now might be similar to like carbon offsetting or flying like except that it's um it's like flying like it's a thing that i'm not willing to give up so how can i reduce it and then focus my efforts elsewhere and i guess not let the guilt like bug you down yeah exactly because mm. yeah so to bring it back to the beginning once you have a good night's sleep you are you do have the physical and mental energy to mm. to make the the types of decisions and changes you want to make in terms of the environment lessening your lessening right. your impact yeah and and without yeah with sleep is so essential exactly like <laughs> you only just need to think to the last time you've had a bad night's sleep and think how you felt the next day Mm-hmm. To be like, sleep is really important. Mm-hmm. And then think about a time where you had like a really good night's sleep and how like the good of a day you had, right. your energy, maybe you were super productive or just in a good mood. Yeah. So what do we do? Is there um, anything else we can do than just accepting where we are? I don't know. Did I write anything down in that one? I'm looking. Well, Stop my- climate change. Oh yeah, that was one. Of, <laughs> that was at the end of one of the articles where it was like, "We okay, so climate change affects our sleep. The solution is to have air conditioners and fans, but that's not great for the climate. So stop climate change." Was like the end of whatever article. <laughs> I mean that. That's, so I think I mean, shifting your efforts, yeah. like figuring out, yeah, what we talk about all the time, what is your priority? Um, because yeah, those other two categories are set: transportation and food. Like those are big areas. And one of the quotes I like to share is that if. Um, if food waste were a country, it would mm-hmm. be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after U.S. and China. So, like, doing something that mm-hmm. would feel like an easy thing to incorporate, like starting to waste less food if you can compost in your city or at home or just figure out ways to waste less, buy less, whatever it is that you can start to incorporate 
that doesn't feel like a huge change, but has a bigger impact than you might think. Is my uh, that's my advice <laughs> we're on so that. We're, 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 we're just shifting the blame. We're like, we want to sleep and be cool. <laughs> I don't think it's shifting the blame. I think it's accepting that, okay, this is, it's not an all or nothing thing. Like flying. Like in our episode, we agreed, like, yeah. okay, we're not willing to give up flying to see friends and family members experience new places. Um, uh, so be feel- aware of the f- impact that it mm-hmm. has. Try to lessen it. And then mm-hmm. do alternatives that help lessen the problem that we're feeling guilty about contributing to. Like there are other ways. Like there's not one way yeah. to s- solve the climate crisis. <laughs> which is why we have this podcast it's such a big gray area like dealing with all of these yeah. like uh, things yeah you got anything else to add not really <laughs> I think yeah I think we have um, an episode to do about sacrifice I don't think I want to have that conversation <laughs> or episode with you, Hannah, because I think I know how it's going to go, <laughs> uh, which means we probably should do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. You get planning on that one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I might show up having already had a few ciders. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's complicated. Do what you can. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's ultimately. And a bit more. <laughs> do what you can and then try and do a bit more yeah <laughs> see what else you can do yeah let us know do you use aircon fans would you if you lived somewhere hot do you we do have the same guilt that i do about using them how do you deal yeah. with it give us some tips yes and uh speak to you next tuesday I don't know if it'll be ne- in two Tuesdays. Next Tuesday, two Tuesdays. In two Tuesdays. In two, two and if Tuesdays. You're, and if you're not listening to this when it comes out, hopefully in just a few minutes, in just less than a minute, when you're going to just hit play on the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, two minute warning. All right, um, love you all, and follow us on Instagram at the T on Sustainable Living, and send us your voice notes, the T on Sustainable Living dot com slash contact. Anything, thoughts, questions? Yeah. Um, Spill your own tea, and we will almost certainly feature it in an episode. Okay, that's all I have to say. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Tea on Sustainable Living podcast. Now, go share it with a friend, a co worker, a partner, a family member, or whoever. A pet? Your cat? (laughs) Someone on the street? (laughs) Whoever you think could use a little more support on their sustainability journey, share it. Uh, you can send them over to our website, thetionsustainableliving.com. And while you're there, check out the show notes for more info on today's topic. All right, give us shutters. See you later. <laughs> Get it? See you later. Zen. See you later. So funny. Oh, brandy. <laughs>